autonomous system number. Now in this section we will see uh, what is autonomous system number, uh, what exactly it is going to uh, identif identify here and then we will see the different protocol categories like IGP and EGP classifications. So autonomous system number is a number which identifies a routing domain of the routers or we can say it is a collection of networks under a common administrative domain. So let's take an example, I got, I got a company, let's see uh, what is this number, I got a company ABC and this particular company is having three different branch offices in three different locations, let's say I'm going to give, give some names like Hyderabad, Bangalore or Chennai, different locations here and if they want to provide the connectivity between these three different locations, what I need to do, I need to contact the service portal and the service portal is going to provide me the line. So which means the service portal will provide a line to connect between these three different branch offices. So which means he's going to provide a line from service portal goes to three different sites of the same customer ABC. So you can see in the black. Let's say there is one more organization called XYZ also having some branch offices in different locations. And I want to ensure that these three different branch offices should be able to communicate with each other. Again, I'm going to contact maybe the same service portal. And the service portal is going to provide a line going from ABC, going to this site and then going to this site. Okay. So now here, uh, if you just try to see here, uh, there is a possibility that the customer ABC and the customer XYZ are connecting on the same service portal. But now my question is how the service portal is going to differentiate the traffic between the customer ABC and the customer XYZ. So because now there is a possibility that the traffic coming from customer Hyderabad that is customer ABC can go to another customer because the service provider needs some mechanism. If you, if you don't want to, uh, this to happen, in that case the service provider has to differentiate the traffic from one customer to another customer. Now to, in order to differentiate what service provider will do is service provider is going to assign one autonomous one number and that number we call it as autonomous system number. We call it as autonomous system number or in short we can say AS number. Now every every location will be identified with some number. Let's say I'm using some 100 is the AS number which I'm using. So the traffic coming from the Hyderabad branch office, this branch office, the black one we can say, it's going to identify, it's, it's the traffic coming from, uh, coming from the customer ABC and it's going to identify that it's coming from 100. And the service portal will ensure that anything coming from 100, it will send only to the sites, only to the routers which are belonging to the same AS number, 100, 100. So, and the customer XYZ, that green one here, uh, he's, he's going to assign some other number like 200. And any traffic coming from uh, 200, the service portal will ensure that it only goes on 200. So the XYZ is differentiated with a separate number called AS number 200 and the ABC organization is separated by another number called AS number 100. So autonomous system number is a number which identify one routing domain. We call it as, as per the definition, what we have seen, it is going to identify one routing domain. In simple words, I can say it's going to identify one organization. So every organization in your internet or in your network or inside the service for network it's going to identify with one number and that's what we call as autonomous system number. So uh, let's come back to the autonomous system number what we have seen it's going to identify one routing domain or in other words we can say the collection of networks under a common administration. Now the default range, the number which identify, it can be given from 1 to 65,535. There is a range of the addresses which we can, the, the range of the numbers which we can give to a specific autonomous systems. And in that it is further classified into two categories, private AS number and public AS number. Now the private AS number can be used within the same service portal. And the public AS number can be used in between multiple service portals. Now let's try to understand how uh, when where these private and public AS numbers are used. Let's first talk about uh, the private AS number. Now the private AS number can be used within the same service portal. I think the range is somewhere around uh, 
164.513 to 65,535. So let's try to understand. Uh, let's let's take an example. I got a company ABC organization name, and it's connecting two different branch offices. One in Hyderabad, maybe some one in Bangalore location, different city. So I want to connect these two different branch offices. So I'm going to contact my local service provider. Maybe one of my service provider. Let's say I'm going to contact one of the service provider Tata here. So I'm going to ask for a line, and the service provider is going to provide the connectivity, and then the service provider is going to allocate one autonomous system number for identifying your company ABC. Let's say the autonomous system number is given as sixty-five thousand. Okay, and let's say there is another customer, another customer, customer X Y Z. Uh, they have different branch offices, maybe in Hyderabad, in Chennai, different locations, or maybe in different countries also. And he's going to contact the service provider to provide the line connection. Let's say this time another service provider, maybe some Reliance service provider. And service provider is going to identify this organization with one number, one autonomous system number, and maybe he is providing some number as sixty-five thousand. Now, if you see. Now this service provider uh, one is assigning some AS number sixty five thousand, and and is using for his customer ABC, and the service provider other service provider service provider two we can say SP two, is assigning the same number for a different different customer. Now that is what we call as within the same service provider. Now if you have a customer site within the same service provider, then probably we might be using some private AS number. More similar to your private IPs, you know private IPs. Private IPs can be used within my LAN or in the WAN, and as long as I'm within the same organization, I can use uh, a private IP. And maybe a different organization, he might be using a different IP. So the same concept applies for autonomous system number as well. Now, as long as the customer sites are connecting within the same service provider, it doesn't make difference. But let's say. If this service provider is sending the traffic from this AS sixty five hundred, and he is sending to the traffic to the internet, to go to internet probably he might be using some different uh, connecting to different AS as well. So he's going to ensure that he go with public AS numbers. So which means all the customer traffic, even though they are using private AS, when they go outside this AS, the service provider will send with his own AS. Now this AS number will be the service provider AS number, somewhere around let's say one thousand. And all the traffic of these customers will be going outside with their AS of one thousand, which means these AS numbers are not recognized outside the service border. They work only within the same service borders. The same thing applies here also. But when you when you talk about public AS number, the public AS number is used in between multiple service borders. So in between multiple means, let's say I have a site uh, in Hyderabad, and I want to connect one more site in Dubai. So I got another location in Dubai, different location, and I want to contact my local service provider. And maybe I'm going to contact my local service provider here, and that local service provider is providing me the line. Okay, and and probably this service provider may not have a line connecting to different locations. So probably uh, he might be using some other service provider on the remote site, some Etisala, some different organization, and then he's providing the line connecting between these two. Now in this scenario, we are going to use something called public AS number. Now the public AS number is globally unique. Let's say in my company, I'm using some AS number of one thousand here. So the service provider will allocate some AS number called something. Let's say let's say one thousand AS number. Now this AS number will be globally unique, and this number is uh, we call it as public AS number. Now the Tata will not have any customer with this AS and this particular. Service provider will not have any customer with the AS. So when you are when you are sending your traffic from one one to another service provider in between multiple service providers, we must use a public AS number. So that's something service provider will take care of that. Okay. So in this kind of scenarios, we use public AS numbers, and there's a range given here. Uh, the, the public range is one to sixty four five one two, and the private range is six six four five one three to sixty five thousand five thirty five. Okay, so the next thing. So once you understand the AS number, now the next thing we need to understand there are protocol categories, IGP and DGP. 
Now there are two kinds of protocols. We have IGP interior gateway protocol and we have exterior gateway protocols. Now interior gateway protocols, they operate within the same autonomous system network. Now which means let's say I got an organization called ABC. I got some routers in different different locations. And I want these particular different routers to talk to each other, to communicate with each other. That's my requirement. Now, if you want to communicate, we use some interior gateway protocols because this router belongs to AS200 and this also belongs to 200, 200, which means they belong to the same organization. And if you want to communicate between them, we use protocols like RIP, uh, which we have seen in the previous sessions. Uh, we will see OSPF and EHR in the later on sessions. IGRP is no more used, but these, these protocols we call them as IGP protocols, interior gateway protocols. Now, if you want to communicate within your same organization, or we can say within the same autonomous system number, we use IGP protocols. Same way, if you want to communicate within your same organization here, we use IGP protocols. But if you want to communicate between two different AS, like here, I got a one organization ABC, uh, XYZ and ABC here, XYZ here, ABC here, and I want these two different organizations to talk to each other, then I need to use some exterior gateway protocol. That's what a different autonomous system numbers. And there's only one protocol running on the internet, that is BGP, which is going to connect all the different autonomous system numbers. Now, if you just take an example of, uh, let's say if I take an example of internet, Anyway, we're not discussing any EHRP here. Uh, just to get a wide screen here. If we talk about internet, I'm sitting here in my company, let's say XYZ, and I'm connecting my router, and I'm connecting to ISP, and from the ISP, I'm connecting to internet, and then from the internet, I'm getting a Yahoo server somewhere on the internet. How it's possible? The service portal is going to keep the track of each and every autonomous system. So it's connecting to other service portal, ISP2, it's connecting to ISP3, it's connecting to ISP4, and also it's connecting to all the different organizations, and it's going to keep the track of all these different autonomous system numbers, and by using which protocol? PGP. That's what uh, inter AS communication. So you are, getting, you are making inter autonomous system communication by using a protocol called PGP. So the entire internet core is running based on the PGP protocol. So when you talk about internet, it runs on BGP. So BGP is something beyond the scope of your CCNA exams here, but uh, definitely you'll see some more in-depth uh, concepts on BGP in the CCNP level certifications, and more in detail you'll see in a service for a track where you get into some core, core BGP kind of concepts. Okay, but as per the CCNA syllabus, as per the CCNA, you just need to understand that uh, BGP is a protocol which is going to provide inter -ace communication it can be between the two different organizations or it can be between the two different service borders or you can say that complete internet backbone works based on PGP. Okay, so let's just quickly revise what we have seen. We have seen something called autonomous system number which is going to identify one organization and the numbers are given within this range. You can see this is a public case and we have private case numbers and then we have a categories of IGP and BGP, EGP. IGP stands for Interior Gateway Protocol, uh, which will allow the communication within your same autonomous system numbers. And if you want to have inter-AS communication from between two different AS, we need to use Exterior Gateway Protocol. And the only Exterior Gateway Protocol running on the network, on the internet, is BGP.